Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Here I've got a very classic calculus problem, and this is indeed a problem that shows up in almost every calculus book that I've seen, and one that I routinely give to my students when I teach a Calculus 2 class or an Integral Calculus class. So let's see what we have. We have a sphere with radius capital R, and through that sphere we have drilled a cylinder of radius little r. So lowercase r will obviously be smaller than capital R, and then our final goal is to find the volume of the resulting solid. So the resulting solid looks a little bit like this. So notice that I've drawn the cylinder going through the center of that sphere in yellow, and the sphere is in white chalk. A great follow-up to watching math YouTube videos is to practice solving math problems on your own. And a great place to do that is with today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant has wonderful interactive math, science, and computer science courses at all levels. And when I say all levels, I really mean all levels. So for math, this ranges from basic arithmetic and algebra, geometry, all the way through differential equations, vector calculus, linear algebra, and group theory. Personally, I take inspiration from Brilliant for the courses that I teach at my college. They often have an intuitive yet outside the box approach that students really respond to. Looking at my analytics, I know that I have viewers of all ages, and I think Brilliant would cater to any of you. So if you're still in school, you might enjoy learning math problem solving techniques as they apply to contests. And Brilliant has two courses devoted just to this material. You could also maybe review basic algebra, geometry, and trigonometry, or use Brilliant as a supplement to a calculus course you're taking. Finally, if you're in a position like mine, you might take inspiration from Brilliant for the courses that you're teaching, and maybe to help your kids learn a little bit extra. What are you waiting for? To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash Michael Penn, or click the link in the description and the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. And one more time, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so generally when you're looking at a problem like this in a Calculus 2 class, it's while you are learning about surfaces of revolution. And that's exactly how we're gonna calculate this volume as the volume of a surface of revolution. So how we'll think about this is put an axis right through the middle of this so that the cylinder is kind of symmetric radially about this axis. Well, I'm gonna put it on its side so that we've shifted it over this way 90 degrees, but that's the same shape. It's just, it makes kind of the setup maybe more familiar, not any easier or more complicated, just more familiar. Okay. So let's see, what kind of shape can we rotate to build a cylinder? Assuming that we're doing our rotation about the x-axis, just to keep it simple. Well, that would be just a line. So that means this yellow cylinder will be created by rotating a line. You might say, well, how do we encode the radius in here? Well, the line will be r units away from the x-axis. So that rotation of that horizontal line will give us the cylinder. Okay, then what about the sphere? Well, in order to get this sphere, which actually now I'll trace in blue just to color code things, we will rotate a circle, but we really don't need to rotate an entire circle, just half of a circle. But not even really half of a circle, just the portion of the circle that is intersecting with the cylinder. And we'll have to obviously figure out what those intersection points are. So we take a picture of a region like this and then rotate that along the around the x-axis. I guess another thing to point out is we know that this point right here is capital R, given that this is a sphere of radius R, capital R. We can also write down the equation of this circle. So since we've put it in the upper plane, or upper half plane, I should say, we know that we can use the equation which looks like y equals the square root of capital R squared minus x squared, like that. So the standard equation would be x squared plus y squared equals r squared, but since we're wanting it as a function of y in terms of x, it would be that. 
And then just to kind of seal everything off, we know that this equation right here is y equals r. That's the standard equation for a horizontal line. Okay, next up, looking at this, you'll see that we'll probably need to know this intersection point here. Maybe this intersection point here, but we're actually not gonna worry about that because we'll in fact just rotate this portion and then double it. Doubling that rotation will be like doubling half the given volume or half the goal volume, which will give us the entire goal volume. So we'll be good to go. Okay, I'll draw one more picture here. And this is like a picture that I always like to draw when I'm doing these surfaces of revolution. And that is put an annulus showing my inner radius, my outer radius, and then my axis. So I'll put my axis in there. I've got my inner curve and my outer curve. So in this case, my axis is just the x-axis, so that's y equals zero. Although if we were rotating about another horizontal line, it's obviously helpful to write it as y equals whatever. And then the first curve that I encounter is y equals r. I know that's the first curve I encounter because if I stand along this axis and look out, I see the cylinder first. And this up here is y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. So now this area component, which is a function of x, so I'll maybe call it a of x, can be described as pi times the outer radius squared. So the outer radius squared will be r squared minus x squared minus the inner radius squared. So that'll be little r squared. So we have something like that. And then finally, our volume will be twice, and then the integral from zero to whatever this point is of our area function, dx. So that's our standard setup for calculating a volume of a solid revolution. Okay, so now let's go ahead and calculate this point right here, which shouldn't be too bad. So we need to set these curves equal to each other. So we've got little r is equal to the square root of capital R squared minus x squared. So squaring both sides, we have lowercase r is capital R minus x squared. Then moving some things around, we see that x squared is capital R squared minus little r squared, or x equals the square root of r squared minus r squared, where I know that I can take the positive square root because I'm looking for this point. The negative square root would be over there, but I'm taking care of that with just symmetry. Okay, so that means here I can put the square root of capital R squared minus little r squared. And now I'm all set. Now I can plug this value of our area function in and then evaluate this integral. Okay, so let's get to it. So this is going to be 2 times pi, and then I have my integral from 0 to the square root of capital R squared minus little r squared of capital R squared minus little r squared and then minus x squared dx. So something that looks like that. But now let's take the antiderivative, so that'll give me 2 pi, then I have r squared minus little r squared x minus 1 third x cubed. So using the fundamental theorem of calculus, that needs to be evaluated from 0 to the square root of r squared minus r squared. Okay, so the interesting thing here is when we plug this square root of r squared minus r squared in here, we'll have a r squared minus r squared to the three halves from this term and from this term. From this term, it's attached to a coefficient of one. From this term, it's attached to a coefficient of one third. So that can simplify to two thirds. So now we have two pi times two thirds and then capital R squared minus little r squared to the three halves. So again, it's three halves for two different reasons. Here we're cubing something to the half power, and here we're multiplying something to the half power by itself. Okay, then we can maybe simplify this a little bit. This would be four pi over three times capital R squared minus little r squared to the three halves. And that's our final volume. So I'd like to point out that a special case of this was suggested by a viewer that um, got in touch with me, so that was nice. Um, but maybe looking at this, what are some values of capital R and little r that would make this turn into a particularly aesthetic solution? So maybe post those in the comments. 
And that's a good place to stop.